The chosen director, Dallas Jenkins, insists he loves the same Jesus as his Mormon brothers. The chosen director, Dallas Jenkins, again articulated in a new interview with Alan Parr that he loves the same Jesus that his Mormon friends do, demonstrating again and again why he has a false understanding of Jesus and the gospel. This is a gigantic, mega doctrinal issue. This is not some small, tiny little thing where we're just being divisive over clothes and worship styles and Bible versions. No, this is a serious issue at the very core of what the gospel is. And for this man to say that somebody who believes built Jesus like the Mormons do, which is exactly what the, the Jesus of the LDS church is, that's exactly what they believe. For him to say that's the same gospel that you and I believe on is by believing Christians, I have a major, major problem with that. And for Alan Parr to give this man a platform and to allow him to say these things that LDS brothers are our brothers in Christ makes me say that Alan Parr may be a false teacher himself. Unbelievable. Like the Mormon church actually believes. They believe that Lucifer and Jesus are brothers. You cannot tell me that people that fly under the umbrella of this LDS label, that they're born again. You, you can't do that. This is insanity. This is a lie. These people lie more than they tell the truth. These people are just, they're, they're, they, they have deceived themselves. I don't know where you people get to where you can be so blind, but apparently you can. However, if you love the same Jesus that Mormons do, you're going to hell. Hey, man. If you believe there is no difference between the Jesus of the Bible and the Jesus of Do Joseph Smith's demonic imagination, and you are spiritually blinded, there's, there only awaits a fiery expectation of judgment. If you repudiate the Jesus of Mormonism, then you're not a Mormon. And any true convert would run screaming from that cauldron of false teaching and heresy. Yes! Look. I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Dallas Jenkins did an interview with Ali Best Stuckey, and Ali Best Stuckey challenged him on that. Alan Parr just sits there like some wet noodles. I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm completely blown away. This is, this is wrong on so many levels. You people don't believe in Jesus. You believe in the cosmic Christ. That's exactly what you believe in. I cannot believe that this this joker right here just sat there and let this man spew not only heresy, but damnable heresy in front of his people. I can't believe you. How dare you, sir? Makes me wonder if you believe the gospel. But whatever. What do I know? I'm just a guy with the Bible here. Go watch Third Adam. It'll change your life. In February of 2020 we were able to release a documentary on YouTube called Third Adam. And in that documentary, we explained to you how that all of the religions of the world were going to find common ground and come together as a one world religion. And that through this great merger of all religions, there would come forth a man who would be the head of all this, and he would be called the Antichrist. The last main characteristic of the Divine Feminine is its calls for agreeableness, or another way to put that is calls for unity. And Alice Bailey said this, The new age is upon us, and we are witnessing the birth pains of the new culture and the new civilization. This is now in progress. That which is old and undesirable must go. And these undesirable things, hatred and the spirit of separation, must be the first to go. Because one of our spiritual enemy's greatest strategies is to divide, especially when it comes to the family of God. We need bridge builders. We need people who can meet in the middle. Uh, we can have uh, disagreements, but they can be amicable. Like we can have uh, differences in opinion, but we could do it in love. Then man, we need to be in open dialogue and friendly dialogue with one another. When we stand together in unity of mission, we are unstoppable. Uh, I think that we're gonna have to make a real concerted effort to walk in greater unity, to be more gracious to one another. You see that they want to unite. They're an agreeable religion. They want to unite with all things and merge it all together. These divisions don't really help anybody. This is a bad thing. Let's let our walls down. Let's all come together and let's usher in a world of peace and harmony 
and let's all get along. A word today that describes this is tolerance. And you hear so many people talking about tolerance today in that we need to get along with everything and because truth is subjective your truth and my truth may not be the same but you know we can set all that aside and just unite around unity but pastor carl lentz is really uh one of the most christ-like people that i know i noticed him being willing to associate with anyone and everyone on the same level and i want to be more like that there's a total different attitude on the part of Roman Catholic uh, leadership today uh, toward uh, me and my work and toward uh, the Protestants in general. No, I think it's good. I think we have dialogue, we have understanding. I can uh, now have uh, complete uh, fellowship with uh, Roman Catholic people and there are no barriers that existed uh, 10 years ago. I think all of that is to the good. Christians um, our relationship to one another should be one of unity and partnership and joy and trust and grace. Let's let that be the close-handed um, part here, and, and then let's begin to have dialogue around these secondary issues that tend to divide us. And the divine feminine absolutely abhors the idea of any separation from anybody. It wants to unite and get along with everybody. That's what makes it feel good. It's like this kumbaya religion. Everybody unite, get together. We can all work together. This is wonderful. That's the divine feminine. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul gives this idea where he says in verse 15, What concord hath Christ with Belial? That's Baal worship. He's saying, you know, you Christian people can't go hang out with those pagans. It, it just doesn't work. And in verse 17, he says, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. They do not believe that because they believe that that is unloving because of its negative nature. Okay, so here's my Twitter feed. This is was posted December 27, 2022. The Chosen is an end times deception designed to unite Mormons, Catholics, Evangelicals together into one religion, mark and avoid. Billy Graham and I became friends um, probably in the last five years of his life, and I loved him, loved him. Uh, and uh, just a spiritual giant. But, you know, it was his organization that had, you know, Mormons as a demon cult. And uh, uh, I went to visit him, and uh, somebody else was there with us who was good friends with him on the first time we met. And uh, he said, uh, so tell me about your relationship with, with Christ and with God. And I started saying something, and the person said, "What? What? What? Uh, remember, remember, Billy, he's a Mormon." And he just turned and looked at him, and then he looked at me, and he said, "You were saying." And I told him, and at the end, he was crying, and I was crying, and he looked at the other guy and said, "He sure sounds Christian to me." And it was that weekend that he actually removed Mormons from the cult status. Oh, that, that, I, that must have made you feel great. It did. Last week, I visited Dallas and made an appearance on this show here with Glenn Beck. Jason Whitlock, host of Fearless. How are you, sir? I'm great, Glenn. How are you? I cannot speak for Glenn, but I can tell you what I felt. Glenn and I share a kindred spirit, a kindred passion. We have two things that we love and are passionate about, God and country. I, for a long time, didn't say what faith I was on air because um, I'm not the model Mormon. That's what I felt when I met Glenn, an energy and a spirit that connects us. It's just the best Jesus prediction, I, I mean, uh, a depiction I've, mm -hmm. I've ever seen. It is a remarkable series mm -hmm. and the only Jesus thing that my children will actually w sit down and watch with me. 
The Chosen is an end times deception designed to unite Mormons, Catholics, Evangelicals together into one religion. You unite Mormons, Catholics, Evangelicals. Glenn and I share a kindred spirit, an energy and a spirit that connects us. If we, those of us who claim faith in a higher power, those of us who claim we love God and country are not willing to stand together as believers, then we deserve what is coming to us. They want to get along with everybody and they don't have any problem with anybody anymore. They're kind of like a hippie where they're just like, man, everything's cool, everything's good, everybody's awesome, everybody's amazing. We love everybody and we want to get along with everybody. Love you too. Bless you. Love you. Love you. Bless you. Even so, Lord Jesus Christ, come quickly. Come now to unify. I believe that the Catholic Church and the Christian Church, we're going to come together right now. We have far more in common than what divides us. We need to be flying a Jesus flag, a religious flag, a faith flag. Kirk Cameron, he is one of the uh, most authentic uh, evangelical Christians. And again, if we don't gather up as believers, gather up as believers, to stand together as believers. The Catholic Church and the Christian Church, we're gonna come together. End times deception designed to unite Mormons, Catholics, Evangelicals together into one religion. You believe God is our loving Father? Absolutely. We're his children? 100%. Are you gonna exclude your children because they went to the wrong institution as long as their heart was in the right place I mean, do you really think that God looks at the Catholics and says, you guys are good, screw no, the rest of them. tons of bad Catholics. Glenn and I share a kindred spirit, a kindred passion. He says that they will know you by your love for one another. Right. He talks about Their the fruit. unity. It's like this kumbaya religion. Everybody unite, get together. We can all work together. This is wonderful. That's the divine feminine. Their the fruit. unity. An energy and a spirit that connects us. We have far more in common than what divides us. When you talk about Pentecostals, Charismatics, <laughs> Evangelicals, uh, Fundamentalist, Catholics, Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, on, on, and on, and on. They are so close in most instances. Okay, so close that you're like, guys, we're arguing over nonsense here. Thank you. So and Martin, we have to say, so, so hang on. One church. Gather up as believers. Stand together as believers. Here's the main point of this entire video, and this is where people are going to get offended. Fearless with Jason Whitlock, it's time for some Tennessee Harmony. Uh, we're joined by a very special guest, uh, Spencer Smith from Kentucky. Pastor Anthony's gonna uh, bless this conversation with a prayer and ask for all of our thoughts and words to edify and glorify Jesus Christ. Uh, Pastor Anthony, help, uh, help me out here. <laughs> Father God, we're thankful for your word. We're thankful that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity uh, to be able to share your word on this platform. And we're praying uh, that the things that, that are discussed are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We pray that they're educational, uh, informative. We're also praying for the listeners. Uh, we're so thankful for those who tune in uh, every day to Fearless, but we're thankful uh, for those who are listening to this segment. And we pray that above all things, you're glorifying. We thank you in Jesus' name. The last main characteristic of the Divine Feminine is its calls for agreeableness, or another way to put that is calls for unity. Because one of our spiritual enemies' greatest strategies is to divide, especially when it comes to the family of God. We need to be flying a Jesus flag, a religious flag, a faith flag. 
we need bridge builders. We need people who can meet in the middle. Uh, we can have uh, disagreements, but they can be amicable. And so, Spencer, I want to start by just thanking you, Man, thank you. Uh, for coming down and sitting with us and, mm -hmm. and, and talking with us and sharing with us. We can have uh, differences in opinion, but we could do it in love. Then, man, we need to be in open dialogue and friendly dialogue with one another. And we pray that above all things, you're glorifying. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You see that they want to unite. They're an agreeable religion. Let's let our walls down. Let's all come together and let's usher in a world of peace and harmony. It's time for some Tennessee harmony. It's time for some harmony. And you hear so many people talking about tolerance today in that we need to get along with everything and because truth is subjective. Your truth and my truth may not be the same, but you know, we can set all that aside and just unite around unity. That's what I felt when I met Glenn an energy and a spirit that connects us. So and Martin, we have to say, so, so hang on. One church. Gather up as believers. Stand together as believers. I can work together with you to amplify light and bring good into an evil world. Spencer, I want to start by just thanking you, Man, thank you. Uh, for coming down and sitting with us and, and, and talking with us and sharing with us. Our relationship to one another should be one of unity and partnership and joy and trust and grace. It's time for some harmony. That's what makes it feel good. It's like this kumbaya religion. Everybody unite, get together. We can all work together. This is wonderful. That's the divine feminine. No, I think it's good. I think we have dialogue, we have understanding, there are no barriers that existed uh, 10 years ago. I think all of that is to the good. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. They want to get along with everybody, and they don't have any problem with anybody anymore. They're kind of like a hippie where they're just like, man, everything's cool, everything's good, everybody's awesome, everybody's amazing. We love everybody and we want to get along with everybody. Unity and partnership and joy and trust and grace. There are men out there who are a part of the New Apostolic Reformation and the charismatic movement who speak of a spirit energy that's working inside of them. A spirit energy. That's what I felt when I met Glenn. An energy and a spirit that connects us. Albert Pike said that the Gnostics would refer to this esoteric power, this energy force. They called it the Holy Spirit. There are people out there who are in churches who are calling themselves pastors and their congregations are calling themselves Christians, but they are Gnostic. They are practitioners of mystery religion, and they are working with an energy force in their congregations. You have to feel that energy and spirit that is inside all believers. This spirit power is moving among them, and they are calling this the Holy Spirit but it is a dark, esoteric, ether energy. Energy. Believers share an energy. Glenn and I share a kindred spirit. Feel that energy. Another term that I'm seeing being used in modern day Christianity, and the main man who is using this term is Tony Evans, the father of Priscilla Shire. It is called the Kingdom Agenda. When we are connected to our Creator, there's a divine power that breathes within. It renews and restores, creating an atmosphere that revives and makes hope. We align ourselves underneath Him. There is an alignment that happens from deep within, where His breath becomes our very own, transforming the atmosphere of our lives. I call this the Kingdom Agenda, where through Him, we're touching heaven and changing earth. I want to talk about uh, my good friend, uh, Tony Evans, I just finished reading his book, Reverend Evans' new book, Kingdom Politics, Returning God to Government. The intention of Evans' book is to inspire believers to think more critically about how they use their vote. 
I enjoyed it tremendously. If you use music and you speak about Jesus, then a spirit energy moves and it is called the kingdom agenda, which is not an orthodox way of explaining the Holy Spirit. I mean, it is really problematic how he puts it, but he says this all the time. The kingdom agenda is moving in churches, in people, and the way he describes it is identical. It is identical to the ether and the quintessence. My good friend, uh, Tony Evans, Reverend Evans' new book, Kingdom Politics. I enjoyed it tremendously. This is the great thesis of our documentary, Third Adam, is that all of these mystical religions are going to rebrand themselves and they're going to all come together and they're going to, you know, create a one world religion. An end times deception designed to unite Mormons, Catholics, evangelicals together. Pastor Anthony is going to uh, bless this conversation with a prayer and ask for all of our thoughts and words to edify and glorify Jesus Christ. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity uh, to be able to share your word on this platform. And we're praying uh, that the things that, that are discussed are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. And we pray that above all things, you're glorifying. We thank you in Jesus' name. If we, those of us who claim faith in a higher power, those of us who claim we love God and country are not willing to put our physical differences aside and recognize the energy and spirit that connects us, compels us to value freedom. If we are not man and woman enough to stand together as believers, then we deserve what is coming to us. For him to say that's the same gospel that you and I believe on as Bible-believing Christians, I have a major, major problem with that. This is a gigantic, mega doctrinal issue. This is not some small, tiny little thing where we're just being divisive over clothes and worship styles and Bible versions. No, this is a serious issue at the very core of what the gospel is. Like the Mormon church actually believes, they believe that Lucifer and Jesus are brothers. You cannot tell me that people that fly under the umbrella of this LDS label, that they're born again. God works in mysterious ways. He connected me with Glenn Beck at this time for this moment in American history. I'm Mormon. A spirit energy moves. Glenn and I share a kindred spirit. Believers share an energy that connects them. That's what I felt when I met Glenn, an energy and a spirit that connects us. Recognize the energy and spirit that connects us. A spirit energy moves, which is not an orthodox way of explaining the Holy Spirit. I mean, it is really problematic how he puts it. It is really problematic how he puts it. And so, Spencer, I want to start by just thanking you, Man, thank you. Uh, for coming down and sitting with us and, mm -hmm. and, and talking with us and sharing with us. And we pray that above all things, you're glorifying. We thank you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Just sits there like some wet noodle. I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm completely blown away. This is, this is wrong on so many levels. You people don't believe in Jesus. You believe in the cosmic Christ. That's exactly what you believe in. I cannot believe that this this joker right here just sat there and let this man spew not only heresy, but damnable heresy in front of his people. I can't believe you. How dare you, sir? Makes me wonder if you believe the gospel. You can't have it both ways. I don't know where you people get to where you can be so blind, but apparently you can.